Well, uh, thanks for having me today. Um, Coach Patra um, invited me to do a clinic here, uh, and I'm just honored to to share some of uh, stuff that has worked for us uh, over the years, uh, in particular to our uh, weekly install of our defensive game plan. Um, I won't get into a lot of the the X's and O's of it, just what do we do in practice, what do we do during the week, you know, from Friday night after the game all the way up to our following uh, uh, game day. So um, that's what we're going to get into. Uh, like I said, um, I coach, uh, my name is Jeff Ogenen, coach for Cloquet Football uh, in the uh, state of Minnesota. We are located up near um, Duluth, Minnesota, which is uh, about two hours north of uh, the Twin Cities. So I've um, been coaching there for quite some time. You'll see my in, uh, contact information is below here, email and cell phone. Glad to talk football with you if you ever have any questions. Uh, like I said, uh, coach at Kaloka High School, I actually played football there in high school. Um, I graduated in 2002. Uh, I started coaching uh, at Kaloka High School a year after I graduated. So um, last year was my 17th year at Kaloka High School and uh, hoping that uh, we get 18th, the 18th year happens this fall. Uh, last 12 years I've uh, been the defense coordinator, um, gone through a lot of uh, um, things throughout the years, uh, you know, learning a lot from things that you do well and you don't do well. And um, it's been a lot of fun uh, being the defense coordinator. I've also uh, coached girls basketball for eight years. Uh, it's been, uh, that's been a, a very uh, rewarding experience. I think the biggest thing with uh, coaching girls basketball, it becomes, you become a much better coach um, in all of your other sports. Uh, girls, uh, they, they cling on every word that you say. So it's uh, makes you more aware of what you say and what you mean by what you say. And um, uh, makes you uh, just appreciate uh, everything a lot more because that's what uh I've come to learn what girls do. Uh, so, and I'm also a math teacher at Cloquet High School. Uh, I've been teaching there for, uh, let's see, this I just completed, or just about to complete my 13th year teaching math there at uh, Cloquet High School. So it's been a lot of fun where, we, where we've been. We've come a long way in our program. Um, we started out our first two years uh, with the current head coach, Tom Lenars, as 0-8, our 0-9, 0-9, and then getting one win our third year. So we started out with a 1-26 uh, uh, record. Uh, and then for come down to where we've gone to the state tournament four out of the last uh, seven years. So it's um, been a lot of fun uh, doing uh, doing that and building a program and, and uh, continuing to play at a high level. Uh, our defense. Um we play a four three with a strong safety. Uh, we play a lot of cover three, uh, strong safety moves around a lot. Um, strong safety is like a quarterback. He, uh, he's got to know what's going on in every, uh, call, every, uh, package that we have. Um, I ask him to do a lot of stuff, uh, with our defense. He's kind of, he's going to be our, our smartest and best athlete. Uh, that doesn't mean he's always our smartest. Doesn't mean he's always our, our best. He just, the uh, combination of two that we can rely on, um, when we uh, are on the field. Uh, we always have a package of a 5-2, a 6-2, and a nickel package each week. Um, that's important to us um, for the fact that, hey, we got to be able to change things uh, when we do, and that's where uh, having those extra packages in each week allows us to do that on the fly. Um, none of those are very uh, extravagant, but it allows us to switch this up very quickly if we have to make a certain adjustment. Um, we always talk about, or we used to play a 5-3. That was uh, something that I started with when I first took over as defense coordinator. Um, and then as offenses have evolved and, and what we see more, the 4-3 has been uh, a good defense for us. Uh, we, and, uh, we always stress three things with our defense. Play fast, play hard, and, and have fun. Um, playing fast. Uh, nothing is more intimidating, I think, when you look at a defense on film and they are fast. If they're fast on the film, they're even faster uh, live. So we want to talk about playing fast, getting 11 guys to football, playing hard. Uh, when you play defense, you got to play hard. It's it's uh, just a part of uh, being on the defensive side of the ball. And then have fun. A defense should be fun. You get a chance to run down and tackle uh, other uh, young men. And what's more fun than that when you're uh, a teenage boy that you get to tackle and uh, – 
throw around kids uh, and not get in trouble for it. So um, nothing more uh, fun than playing defense in football. So we're talking about our weekly timeline here with uh, how we break down and, and get ourselves ready for our timeline, how we install or our game plan, how we install things uh, throughout the week. Friday night uh, into Saturday morning. Uh, as soon as the game's done on Friday night, we upload our game from the huddle. That's important. We do that immediately. And there's times where um, that game is already uploaded to the huddle before we even leave the locker room on Friday night. Uh, obviously on road games that uh, you can't do that on the way home. So you got to wait to, to do it till you get there. But um, for sure, before we wake up the next morning, uh, that film is going to be uploaded on, in the huddle. Uh, and then we uh, go, go in and get next week's opponent's film from huddle. Uh, we have a, a um, game share on our uh, in our conference so that uh, you can get access to any opponent's film for, throughout this regular season, which has been uh, nice. Um, and that um, is beneficial to the coaches that want to put in time uh, breaking down film. Uh, if you're willing to put in time, you're going to find – uh, tendencies and things that you can use to your advantage um, the following week. So get on, we get on there and get the film uploaded and shared with our players. And, and uh, then when we upload our film and get our opponent's film, we send all of that to Huddle to get broken down. That's a great service by Huddle. It breaks down our you know, down distance, um, was it, whether it was successful or not of play, uh, direction of the play. Um, they, I don't have them do any of the the uh, formations and plays because I don't think that uh, they get them right um, because they're doing it so quickly. So I always go in and our staff goes in and charts all the formations and the plays because we want to use our technology or our termination terminology, sorry. Um, but uh, uh, so I don't have how to do that, but everything else I have them do, which helps us um, break down and get reports later on. Into Saturday and Sunday, um, is when you put in a lot of your work to get ready for the next week. Um, it's important that you show up on Monday ready to go and your kids are, you put them in the best position to get them prepared for a Friday night. So Saturday and Sunday, this is for our coaches. We look at opponent film, opponent's film. Uh, I put in the formations and the plays because um, I like to have it in my, like I said, terminology. Uh, the rest of the coaches are looking at the opponent's film and uh, finding out um, different things about them. Uh, we run our huddle po reports. Uh, they are uh, different things, and I'll, I'll go into more detail with that later on in the clinic here, but we run a bunch of reports that help us at least uh, identify some things that uh, maybe some tendencies or some things that uh, show up that you wouldn't be able to get from just watching the film. Um, like I said, all defense coaches will watch the film from Friday night, and they also watch the opponent's film. From a Friday night, we always uh, give our players a summary of how things went on Friday night. Um, nothing real long, but a few things that they a, can work on, B, that they did well, C, that uh, we'd like to see um, changed or, or worked on. Uh, with that, you know, we also give them a, a place to uh, look at in their uh, uh, huddle so that they are, are really specific on things that we saw that either, like I said, they did well or need to work on. Um, and then I also want all defense coaches to come to our meeting on Sunday with thoughts and ideas for their opponents. So what do you think about them? You know, strengths and weaknesses, ideas of how we're going to defend them, that type of stuff. That brings us into Sunday night slash evening. Uh, we meet as coaches and we keep it to an hour and a half max. Um, because we feel like we're not going to go on, come in on Sunday and just waste a bunch of time. We want to be on task. We want to be on time. We want to be efficient. Um, and that's something that we've developed over the years. We, we started with, you know, having two to three hour meetings. And, you know, a lot of times you, you sit there and you start BSing. And, and before you know it, you waste a half an hour of time that you could have got done so that we can get back to our families. We all have uh, young kids at home or, or, are married and we want to have, be able to spend time with them. Football season is a grind. Uh, you want to maximize your efficiency as much as possible so that you can still spend time with your family. So one and a half hours max. Uh, we spend kind of, we always talk about last week. Uh, what happened on Friday? Uh, what do we do well? What do we do bad? And we talk about personal um, discussions. 
hey, do we need to make any changes on the defensive side of the football um, or our uh, punt return special teams? Uh, do we do we want to give this kid a look? Do we want to give that kid less time? Whatever it might be, we uh, have those quick discussions. We, we li- limit that to 20 minutes max because we want to move on. We want to make our changes and, and uh, get on to our opponents. So 20 minutes, we try to leave that as our maximum time allotted for that. And then we get into our opponent. Um, I like to, as a uh, defense corner theory, hear everybody's thoughts and ideas. I have my thoughts and ideas. And um, the guy that works directly with me uh, on the defense side of the ball with our varsity, you know, we text throughout the weekend on different things. Um, but we, uh, you know, there's four guys that I, I meet with, and including myself. So we uh, go through ideas and, and thoughts. And then when we get all those on the table, how are we going to defend um, our opponent for the upcoming week? And uh, we have some good discussions when it comes to that. Uh, they give me their ideas and thoughts. I, uh, After the meeting, I, I usually spend some time myself and, and kind of make some final decisions on how we're going to uh, go about defending our, our next opponent. <clears throat> and on Sunday night is uh, kind of my time, uh, you know, after we uh, – coaches go home uh we're i'm gonna put together the game plan um and that's where we get our scouting sheets for our players and our, our coaches uh we we limit what we put on our scouting sheets we want very specific information i don't believe in having a, a scouting plan that's four five six seven eight pages long um because the more information you try to, to throw at them the less likely they're going to retain all of it and uh the more chance that uh you're going to lose sight of what's really important of your of your next opponent. Uh, we drop all the plays for practice. We uh, are very specific in the, how we drop the plays for practice. The reason being is we want our scout offenses to uh, do them to the best of their ability, and we draw on who they're going to block, how the plays run, um, all the motions, everything that we want, and we will write any notes on there that we need to so that they're, they're uh, done to the best of their ability. And that's important. That takes a long time on my part to draw those up. I spend probably uh, two, three hours um, between Sunday and, and Monday getting those ready for practice because it's important. We color code them so there's no no uh, issues with uh, where kids are supposed to be, that kind of thing. So um, we found that, that that time is well worth it because you want your team time to go as, as smoothly as possible. Practice plans. We keep a pretty uh, basic practice plan as far as time goes. We just uh, talk about what we're going to do it, uh, in those specific time slots. So we'll uh, touch base on those. Call sheets. We always get our call sheets ready uh, before the week starts because um, there's always going to be some kind of changes. We, uh, we think we have some calls in or, or some schemes that we're going to do defensively, and, and we come to find out as we run them on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, hey, that's not going to work. Uh, let's Let's – get that out of here or, Hey, we need to tweak this or that. So we get the preliminary call sheets ready to go so that we can uh, put those in and in our practice plays because we put all our calls with the plays. So we're practicing what we need to do. And then we, I always have a depth chart slash packages sheet so that we know what kids need time and practice throughout the week. And, and we're uh, very purposeful on who we get snaps to, because it's important that um, not only our first team gets pra- uh, snaps, but our backups to do do too. So, it's important that we have those depth charts and packages sheets ready to go for coaches and the players. Uh, Monday. Uh, Monday is kind of a, a light day for us practice-wise. We uh, come in before practice, so right after school is done, we meet as a team. We do film on our last week and, and go over a few things. I try to limit to about 10 plays, 10 to 12 plays that we want to highlight of what happened in the game on Friday, and then it's time to move on. We'll talk about our next opponent and go over a few things. Um, in the classroom on, on what we're going to see and what they like to do. Uh, and then we do also deal with our offense too. So we have about 45 minutes or so of, of uh, film time, 45, 50 minutes before practice with our varsity kids. So um, we try to be efficient with that also. And at practice, uh, we get together. Um, we're just in, in uh, helmets out there on Friday or on Mondays. And we're just doing our formations in place. Um, we're going to talk about all the formations and certain plays they like out of those formations. We'll talk about our defensive packages and, and personnel, and then we'll also get our scouting sheets to our players um, because it's important that they get a chance to – now they've just seen it on the field and we've talked about it live and in person, and uh, that's one way of them learning it. Another way of them learning it is to also read it themselves and look at it. 
So uh, it's important we get our scouting sheets to our players uh, at the end of practice on Monday. And then going into Tuesday, we're ready to go. <clears throat> uh, Tuesday and Wednesday um, are our big days. Uh, this is where we go hard. We, we spend a um, bulk of our time getting ready for the next opponent. And uh, it's important that uh, we go hard on Tuesdays and Wednesdays because those are our only two days that we really get to practice and get ourselves ready for uh, physically for our next opponent. Uh, every Tuesday and Wednesday, we have indie time. Um, we break down in our positions defensively and offensively, but there are different times. Um, we fix a little bit of last week's stuff. If there's some technique work or, or some scheme, some simple scheme stuff that we did wrong, uh, we try to, to do those during any time. And then we spend a lot of time just working on technique. Uh, you guys know as far as defensive, uh, defensively how, how it goes for high school kids, we spend a lot of time on tackling. Um, that's important to us because uh, if you can't get the guy down on the ground, you have a tough time uh, being successful on defense. So we spend a lot of time on tackling throughout the week, uh, especially early part of the season. As Obviously, as the season gets to week you know, six, seven, eight, we uh, pare that down a little bit so that we're not beating on each other too much. But through the camp and, and through the first half of the season, we're spending a lot of time on tackling in our indie time. We also do uh, what we started a few years ago as a D walkthrough. Um, it always was a pain in the butt when we just tried to jump into team time and our scout teams didn't know even what to do with the play. So you're spending half the, the team time um, this, with the scout teams screwing it up. And uh, it was always frustrating for us. So we, we come up with a D walkthrough um, for about 10, 15 minutes before we even do our team time. And this is just honestly walking through the plays. We get into our uh, defensive um, calls and then we have the scout team in their formations and, and then they just walk through the play. Uh, this helps with uh, all kinds of things with our defense. It, it, uh, and I'll go in a little more in detail too, but um, we just do a, a D walkthrough. And then team time uh, is full speed. We go after it, um, get after it, we're going hard two scout offenses. Um, I'll go into a little more detail why two scout offenses, but that's important to us too. And then Thursday uh, is just a walkthrough too. Um, a little bit faster pace and say our D walkthrough on, on Tuesday, Wednesday, but we review formations, plays and concepts, uh, make sure that we're ready to go. Uh, we review our defensive packages and calls, make sure that everybody's on the same page when we call we want a certain defensive package out there. Uh, kids know who's supposed to be on it. Uh, we also review our no huddle signals. You never know what a team's planning for Friday night. So having the no huddle signals is important to us because, um, you know, we got to be able to make calls on the fly too. And then we, uh, defense, uh, we're always in charge of punt return. Um, something that as I've been the defense coordinator, I've uh, always talked about taking over because the last thing you want to do after you've just worked your tail off on uh, first down, second down, third down, is to have something get screwed up on punt return and now you have to go back on the field. So uh, we feel as a staff that it's important that we do the punt return. Um, we control it because uh, we want to make sure that we're not putting ourselves in position to, to give up a fake or, or something. So we want to do our punt return uh, through the defense. And hey, and then comes Friday night. Um, and like I said earlier, we play fast, we play hard, and we have fun. Uh, that's important to us, and, and we preach those those six words to our kids all year long that uh, want to play fast, play hard, and have fun. Um, and we've had some success just uh, getting after it, um, and I think it's because we do a good job of preparing them throughout the week. Uh, also on Fridays, a couple things, adjustments. You have to make them. Hey, you might go into a Friday night knowing that you are far superior than your upcoming opponent, and you could just show up and beat them. 28 to seven. Um, we all have opponents like that, or, or at least hope to have opponents like that. Um, that doesn't mean that you don't make adjustments. You have to make them. Um, we have gone into over the years, not many times, obviously, because we, we do our part preparing, but we've gone into where a couple of different times where a team comes up with a different game plan that we have seen on film or, or anticipate them doing. And we've had to make wholesale changes with our adjustments and, we do that throughout the year, whether it's small or big, because 
then when it comes to crunch time at the end of the year when it's the playoffs or if you make the state tournament, uh, you can make them too. So you can't ask your kids to make adjustments if, later in the year when you're playing better opponents if you haven't done that all year long. Uh, with that, I remember um, a story. Of, we had a team that uh, in 2017 made it to the state championship game, um, had a special group of kids, and it made us look really, really good. Uh, but it was our state quarterfinal game, and after halftime, we made some small adjustments, and so did the other team are playing because obviously they're, they're in the state tournament. They're a good team too, and and we're up 21-7 at halftime, and they come out and bang, bang, and uh, score twice, and now they're up 22-21. And uh, our defense guys, um, you know, our middle linebacker, just like most middle linebacker guys, are are uh, <laughs> a little bit uh, knuckleheadish, and uh, but he, you know. And doesn't uh, mince his words whatsoever. He comes off the, the field and he says, "Coach, the, the shit ain't working." And, you know, he says to me, and and not in a disrespectful way, but he he knows it's not working. And our strong safety comes off, off right behind him, and 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 you know he's obviously uh, seeing something. And you know he calmly says, "Hey, coach, will we just make this small adjustment? I stay here when they go in motion, but you know part of our game plan, and and I think we can take away this counter play and." And it's like, hey, you guys see it? Let's do it. Let's let's make that change. And that's the middle of the third quarter. And and uh, you know we were able to hold them to no more scores the rest of the game. So, um, you know, if you make those adjustments, those kids, your kids start to see those too. And the second thing on Friday nights, you have to have huddle sideline. If you don't have huddle sideline, you're putting yourself at a major major disadvantage um, on Friday nights if if the opponent has them has it because it's the greatest uh, system that high school coaches are allowed to use ever. Uh, you get the instant replay of what's going on. You know, you don't have a kid come off the field and say, well, I'm being triple teamed or, or this or that. And it's a uh, film don't lie. And it's a great uh, teaching tool on Friday nights, not only for the kids, but for his coaches too. We, you get to see right away, Hey, this doesn't work or this is working or what we can do to change this. Um, and having that sideline view and the end zone view at your disposal um, throughout the game is just uh, phenomenal. So if you don't have huddle sideline, you have to get that. Uh, so some things on how reports, uh, we, uh, I like to run my own reports. I know they have some canned ones in huddle, but I like to run my own. I always do a formation, then play one. And then I also flip and do play and then formation. Uh, both of those, uh, compile the information a little bit differently and, and you can find out things both ways. So I like to go both ways. I found it to be, uh, very beneficial to us. And we do down distance type of play and the play. Um, obviously running a report with down and distance is a big help, especially with type of play. You get to see, are there any tendencies with what they like to run on certain downs and distance, and then what play do they like to go with uh, on certain down and distance. So I like to run that report. That's gives us, uh, usually gives us some kind of hint on, on special situations, what they're going to do or what they like to do. Uh, and I also do formation, play direction and play type. Um, I think this is important. Um, by formation, most teams have a direction they want to go to. Um, and that's why they have uh, formations. There's a reason why they do different formations because they want to be able to get an advantage a certain way. So we look at formations and, and play direction and then play type. Um, that usually gives us information information on what is good for us uh, to call in certain situations. I also like to run a hash play direction, play type report um, because on different hash marks, they, they run different ways. I, some teams like to go to the, the wide side, and if you can prevent them going to the wide side and, and push them into the boundary by knowing that they want to go that way on, on the certain hashes, that's a huge advantage to yourself. Hey, why play on two-thirds of the field when you can play on one-third of the field? And then I always do play type. I just break it down by run pass um, because hey, we got to know if they're, if they're run heavy or, or pass heavy. We kind of know that as you watch film, but it's always important to, to get the exact numbers. Me being a math teacher, I, I play with numbers a lot more than probably some coaches do, but uh, numbers don't lie. Uh, analytics is a big deal. Um, not as far as what they've done many years ago, but as far as that year, it's hard for a high school team to uh, um, change from week to week. So when you can break down film um, multiple weeks, it's, it gives you a, advantage big time, I think, in high school football. So let's get more into detail on what we do at practice. Um, our indie time is always 10 to 15 minutes. We we believe in uh, 
keep in practice uh, at a high tempo, get after it, switch from station or from uh, time slot to time slot. You know, we want to be moving on. So 10 to 15 minutes we do in any time. Um, usually at the beginning of the year, it's always at the 15 minutes. As, as the year goes on, we, we probably uh, narrow it down to 10 minutes, um, you know, halfway through and then it, especially towards the end to break up that, you know, pounding on each other, that kind of stuff. So like I talked about earlier, we do a lot of tackling at any time. Uh, we break down by defense line, and then even in the defense line, we break into defense ends and defense tackles. We go to linebackers, um, and then uh, we go into our secondary. And our strong safeties will go from linebacker into secondary, depending on what their job is going to be from week to week so that they get their proper time at the position you're going to see them more at. So um, our strong safeties flip back and forth. And then we are walk through. It's always 11 on 11, uh, like I talked about, 10 to 15 minutes. Um, this is important. I was like I talked about earlier. Uh, something we came upon uh, a few years ago, and it's been a tremendous help for us for not only our defensive kids, but our scout team is huge uh, chance for 10 to 15 minutes just to walk through the play and kind of see how their offense is, is put together so that when they go to run it, they have a much better idea of, of what's going on there. And then team time, we uh, limit it to 25 minutes. Sometimes we'll ask for five more minutes. Um, and there are times where we just say we only go 20 minutes because we, we've done our thing. Um, so team time is, is around 25 minutes. Uh, we don't want to make it any more than that unless we absolutely have to because, let's face it, uh, they take enough uh, blows and, and physicality on Friday nights, and we don't need to be pounding at each other uh, for an extended period of time on Tuesdays and on Wednesdays. We just need to get in, get out, get our work done at a high tempo and and not uh, wear them out. Uh, we talked about it earlier, any time is fixed last week and some technique work. Um, our walkthrough is always our first team on Tuesdays and our second team on Wednesdays. We give them each a chance to just slow it down and really just go through our walkthrough and, and where we as coaches can can talk to specific positions or certain things on different types of plays that they might run so that uh, we can work on our for our play fits. Um, and then we can also work on identifying formations. We always go to scout offense. So scout offenses. So there's not a extended amount of time in between plays. I hate it as a, as a coach when I was in my first uh, five, 10 years of all the time we wasted on the team going back to the huddle and then we coming out and play. You just, you waste so much time in practice doing that. So we do two scout offenses during our walkthrough and our team time. Um, it just goes at a much better pace, and we are fortunate enough to have enough kids to do that. And then we also go through any new calls that we have in our walkthrough. And from week to week, we add things or bring back things that maybe we haven't focused on for a few weeks or since camp. So we, we go through anything new that we're going to throw in for that week. Uh, team time. Um, this is where we really get after it and – and uh, do the, our, most of our work. We limit our team time to 20 plays. Uh, I don't drop more than 20 plays uh, because anything more than 20 plays, you're just you're you're trying to uh, micromanage, I think, and you're trying to hit on every little thing. We want to concentrate on concepts. Uh, what type of run plays do they want to run, or what what type of um, area do they want to attack? And then the pass pass plays, we concentrate on just um, route combinations. What, what are we going to see uh, out of certain formations and, and certain uh, passing situations? So 20 plays is always uh, enough. You don't need any more than that. And it's really less than 20 because we always have a trick play. Um, back in uh, about, you know, be about 10 years ago now, we got beat in the regular season off of a trick play because we weren't prepared for it. And uh, throughout the years, um, we've had teams do different trick plays against us. We always put that in our kind of our uh, um, play bank, and we always pull out a trick play every week, um, whether it's a funky formation or, or halfback pass or whatever it might be. And throughout the years, we've learned what teams or what coaches like to do things. So we do a trick play because, hey, then your kids are, are making sure that they're doing what their, their responsibilities are, taking care of their jobs, um, because a trick play is always going to try to make your kid make a decision that they normally don't make. So we we, um, we always have a trick play in there. Uh, right away, during team time, our first team gets the first 20 plays. 
um, always. Um, and then on, on Tuesdays and on Wednesdays, we'll take our first team through about the first 10 or so um, because we want to give her some time to the second team also. Um, so whatever, t- you know, those 20 plays, we better get done with those 20 plays in 15 minutes um, or less. And that gives a good 10 minutes of time to the second team uh, and the, on Tuesdays because um, we have to be at a quick pace. That's why we go with two um, scout offenses. Hey, we run a play every every 20 seconds um, during team time or so. Every 30 seconds we're running a play. Um, so it, it's quick pace. Kids get uh, tired, which is good because on Friday nights it, it seems like it slows down because you, you're not uh, going through that many plays. So we want to make sure we're fast-paced. Uh, on Tuesdays also, we always do our 5-2 package at the end. We just run four plays um, just to, to have a refresher on our 5-2. And then on Wednesdays, we do four plays versus our 6-2, which is our goal line package or a short yard package. So we're ready to go. We we um, don't know what they're going to run, obviously, in those situations, but we have an idea of maybe what they might do. Um, but uh, we just want to give those defensive packages a little bit of time on Tuesday and Wednesday so that we're not just throwing them out on Friday with no practice. And on Thursdays, we limit to four plays for each package. Uh, so that's our, um, you know, four plays for our 4-3, four plays for our 5-2, four plays for our 6-2 package, our goal line. And then we also do four plays for our nickel, our coverage or late game situations where we're just trying to play coverage, keep everything in front of us. So we do four plays um, with our first team starting out, and then we always rotate in our, our primary backups. So they're each taking, you know, two plays out of each um out of each package and then we also go over our punt return and go over any fakes that we could potentially see with our punt return um like i said we don't spend a lot of time in our punt return because mainly our defense we bring in a guy uh we sub one guy out and we bring in a guy to be the returner um but uh we don't want to give up anything on on punt return now if we get any positive yards on a punt return it's a good thing that's that's uh that's a positive for us uh we don't care as long as uh our returner catches the ball. Those are that's the only thing that we worry about with our returner. Does he have sure enough hands to come in and catch the football on a punt? We don't want to give up any extra yardage on a on a punt rolling, and then we also don't want to give up uh, any kind of fakes or or some kind of trick play to keep their drive alive. So, hey, we worked our tail off on, uh, like I said, first down, second down, third down. Let's get off the field. So we we are in control of the punt return, like I said earlier. Uh, like I talked about 20 plays, um, more than 20 is waste of time. We uh, always uh, do run plays versus pass plays. Now, if a team likes to run, obviously, which most high school teams do a, a lot, especially in our, our part of the state of Minnesota, um, but we also put in pass plays. And like I said, we want to find those route combinations. Don't ever match your defensive call to the plays. Um, I always get accused of every year with the scout offensive coaches that we're, we're putting the play versus a certain call so that we're always winning. Um, I just tell them that they don't uh, run the play good enough to, to be successful. So um, that's why we, we just look so good. But um, don't match the calls to your plays. That, that's not going to teach your kids anything. In fact, we, we try to put our bad call versus uh, one of their best plays because you never know on Friday nights. So you never know when they're going to make the right call or when you're going to make the right call. So we don't want to match them. I talked about two scout offenses, high tempo is important uh, to us. We want to be plays every 30 seconds, get after, get after, get after it. And uh, when it comes to Friday nights, we're not going to be in a situation where we're, where we're feeling like it's going too fast for us. Uh, scouting sheets. Uh, what do we do on our scouting sheets? We, we want to keep our scouting sheets page pages, uh, one page front to back. Uh, we don't feel like we don't, need more information than that. Um, You know, we don't need a a full sheet to show formations. Uh, Kids know where they're supposed to line up and and what they're supposed to do. We don't need to have our uh, field drawn up on a page and show our formation. That's just a waste of space. Um, So we we feel like we got to keep it to one page or less. Um, Like I said, we don't put a ton of information on just what's important. Again, we don't want to just fill them with a bunch of stuff that is needless. we don't go into a lot of stuff with our defense as far as, hey, they're going to run this ball 75% of the time on this on this uh, down a distance. We might give them some of that, but we're not going to give them all of it. We as coaches know it so that on Friday nights we're going to make the best call possible or what we think is the best call possible to put ourselves 
in the best position to be successful. They only need to know, hey, out of this formation or, or whatever, just the, the most important information possible for what they need is what, what goes on those sheets. Uh, here's an example of a, a game plan. It's from our 2017 state quarters. Um, you'll see that we go through their kind of formations. We don't even necessarily draw them up because, hey, let's be honest, uh, by the end of the season or by the time you guys get into your weeks, they should know what the formations are. So we go through what, what they might like to do, what are, what we're going to do with different formations. Here's our defensive calls. We'll talk a little bit about that too. Um, that's, that's our wristband. We, we do our kids with a wristband. So those are the things that are on the wristband. And then we got our rotations here of what kids go into certain positions so that, you know, for on Friday nights, we're not searching for a kid. They, they know too what's going on. Um, our defense signals, uh, we like I talked about, we touched on here just a minute ago, wristbands. We do wristbands for uh, five to six players on the field or during the game. Um, our players, some of them are backups because what if they're, we have our middle linebacker calling the plays and he gets hurt, we got to make sure our backup guy has a wristband too. Uh, with our wristbands, we, we yell in a, a number or a color. And we have three different combinations for each call so that no nobody can really pick that up. We have a call for this or a color for this and a number or maybe two numbers and a color then they have no reason to know uh what's coming because you if you can chart that across the field then uh you're you got uh you're smarter than i than most people are uh and then we also have signals for everything also so in case of no huddle we don't need to huddle up as a defense we can just make a signal from the sideline on what's going on so that we can communicate that across the field so we also do our our signals for no huddle and that is it, uh, is how we game plan during the week or how we build our game plan. Um, here's my contact information, email and cell phone. Uh, email is probably the best way, or, or I don't mind if you text the cell phone. I am here to ask, answer any questions that you have. I uh, love talking football. And uh, if you uh, have anything to add or any suggestions, I would gladly take those too. So um, love to hear from you and thanks for having me.